Hi guys, Squirrel here. Train Simulator 2015. I can't believe. I can't believe it's been a year already. Unbelievable. But here we are, September, <laughs> and another version of Train Simulator. To be honest, next year is what I'm looking forward to the most. I think that's when they're going to put this on a new Unreal Tournament engine, and that is going to be spectacular. What have they changed in 2015, though? That's the question. Well, the menu's fairly similar, a little bit cleaned up, nice nice skin here, the music's changed, it's quite calming, it's not quite so irritating, it's, it's quite pleasant actually. Um, they've got this new thing called the Academy, which is uh, meant to teach you, basically, how to drive trains. There are different scenarios, different categories, there's controls, driving, objectives, safety and signalling, so... You know, if you find that you want to brush up on your signaling, you can just click on that and work your way through, you know, different ones. Warning and stop signals, combined signals, simple head, multi-head. Uh, if you decide you want to just go for some driving, switching junctions, that kind of stuff, coupling, uncoupling. Which, you know, it's all good. You can actually learn how to play the game now in the Academy. That's on top of the tutorials as well. Uh, I'll show you more about that in a second. Let's just pop back to the main menu. So the Academy's there. Uh, the engine driver stuff takes you, it kind of pops up, I'll, I'll just show you. It kind of pops up and shows you this stuff here. Um, and basically, you know, they want you to sign in to their sites. They want you to look at their stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll just leave that to you. Then we've got build. And this is obviously the scenario stuff. Where you can build your own scenarios. Um... This is not something that I personally use. I'm more of a content creator for videos. I don't actually get involved in, you know, skinning trucks or making scenarios or skinning trains, that kind of thing. But I've been told that if you if this is your kind of thing, then there's quite a lot of change in here and the editor's a lot better. And obviously you can publish it to the uh, Steam Workshop, I think. So apparently that's changed quite a bit don't know for sure profile hasn't changed that's just your profile and then you've got drive and you know it used to break you into career and standard and quick drive on different menus well that's now just been simplified into a tab scheme which is nice you just click on drive now and you come into here quick drive career standard and free roam you'll see it's all a lot slicker the interface is is been smartened up a little bit so if you go to standard for example uh, you can see down here that the difficulty ratings, um, the whole thing's just a lot easier to access. It's easy to access your routes. I mean, this is one of my big complaints about the interface as it stood, was you just couldn't find stuff. You know, you knew that you had a particular train and it was scrolling through trying to find the scenarios for it. It was just a royal pain. But now, for example, you can just go into here and uh, you could put ICE, for example, and it now shows you anything that has the word ICE in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Obviously, it's matching something in here. I don't know what the word ICE... Oh, service. There you go. So, <laughs> ICE has been matched on the word service. What you can't do... Um, I think that searches on the scenario name. So, um, if I wanted to go for class 221, for example, I wanted it to search on the train itself. If I go class 221, you'll see it hasn't done that. And even if I click on train name, you would kind of expect it to filter now on the train name, and it doesn't. That's the only negative thing I have to say about that, is I would like to have been able to search on train name on scenarios and scenario name. But, you know, it's still better than it was. So if I got ICE, I can now find all of my stuff with ICE. I can see the difficulty down here, the duration, and whether I've done it or not. So that's nice. You can also filter on certain things. So if you want to, um, I don't know, filter on London to Brighton, for example, then you can do. Uh, these all the different sort of trains that you could drive in a London to Brighton scenario. Again, it's cool. It's all good. It even tells you what the look at this. It tells you the time of day and whether it's going to be clear or autumn. Very slick, I have to say. Very nice. Um, I here's you're probably going to hate me for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is 12 months worth of effort, and when Train Simulator 2014 came out. The most notable change was this newer interface. I'm not sure what I expected for 2015. Um, I do like what they've done, but arguably I'm not sure if it's a year's worth of effort. I'm not sure if I'm looking at a year's worth of effort. I don't know how big the team is though, to be fair. 
and uh, it would have nice to it would be nice to see some more substantial changes. That being said, there could be things under the bonnet that I don't know about. There could be things when I start the game, uh, model changes, texture changes in lieu of moving to Unreal Tournament, or maybe they've not done very much because they're going headstrong in supporting this onto a new engine. So maybe we got to give them some slack, but. In the years to come, I would like to see more advances. I would also like to see release notes um, so that we can see, we can read about what's changed in the game, not just kind of sit here and try and work it all out. Anyway, enough of that. We're on Train Simulator 2015, and I've bought some new stuff. I've bought the... because uh, they have a sale on, or they did have a sale on when they released this. Uh, let's just turn that off. They had a sale on, and... Um, what did I buy? Sherman. Yeah, that was it. Sherman Hill scenarios uh, using the Union Big Boy. I bought this. There was like a pack. It was 50% off. And it was the Union Specific Challenger, uh, that train, and the Union Specific Big... Specific? <laughs> the Union Pacific Big Boy, which just is a beast. And I have to drive this beast. Uh, so there are two scenarios here, a big boy on Sherman Hill Part 1 and a big boy on Sherman Hill Part 2. Um, not sure if I want to do the Sherman Hill just yet, but I'd like to do stuff on with the with the big boy, which is here. Uh, so we've got the big boy intro for 20 minutes, and then we've got other Sherman Hill scenarios here. Uh, so I'm probably going to go for the intro for this video, and we'll see if we can spot any changes to the, to the textures, to anything else in the game. Uh, other than that, that will be the end of the video, but I will do more big boy stuff, and I haven't th forgotten about my three country corner route either. Don't worry, I'll be going back to that. If you're a rail fan, I'm sure you want to see the other seven scenarios that I have left to do. But let's get started with the big boy intro, Union Pacific Big Boy. I was going to do the intro, but I went through it and it was a bit dull. There was no scenery, so I thought I'd just do this instead. Conductor, this morning we get to haul these cement hoppers up to Laramie Cement. After dropping them off, we're picking up some returns to take to the yard. Let's get going! Okay. Let's put all the, all the uh, stuff on so you can see it. It's 4am, I think. And it's snowing. Doesn't it look fantastic? Listen to this. So cool. Right then. Okay, so we want to... Um, let's get some pressure up into the cylinders, so 60% or so. We're going to start to release the brakes and bring up the throttle at the same time. We appear to have signal clearance. I thought for a minute though we didn't have signal clearance. Yeah, so the intro one I was going to do was an operational thing. It was just how to drive the big boy and it could have been fun, but it wasn't very interesting. The scenery was just nothingness. Um, so in the end I thought, you know what, let's just do a proper scenario. Oh, I'm speeding. It was 60 a second ago. So let me change the speed limit. Let's bring the speed down. There we go. Should do it. And then it changes to 60. Thank you very much, game. <laughs> let's release the brakes. There we go. Okay, let's get up to 60. Yeah, I was I was doing the uh, scenario and it it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been entertaining, I don't think. So I thought this was more entertaining. I thought we'll take these cement hoppers instead, and then we've got to drop them off, and then we've got to bring some empties back again. That sounds much more fun. This is the Union Pacific Big Boy. Look how many axles this thing has. It has four drive wheels at the front and another four at the back, followed by two sets of, um, I don't know what they call those wheels, there must be a name for them. Oh god, I'm speeding. I'm not paying attention. Probably going to get done for operational errors now. Never mind. Trying to shave a bit of speed off. There we go. Okay, let's try and cruise at 60. This smoke is, um, look at this. That looks like it's been touched up a little bit. If you notice down here, you've got the pressure gauge, the green one. As long as it's showing green, it means we're not trying to use more pressure than we've put into the cylinders. Uh, the water and the fire, I'm j I've am i just got an automatic on the fire. 
water is just something that you need to keep full and you have to fill up on a long journey. Um, the fire's on automatic, but when it does fire, what you'll see is all this smoke goes black, which is kind of kind of cool and little touch. Uh, apart from that, you, you've got your standard controls really, the throttle, the reverser and the brake. Uh, the reverser, unlike a, say, a, a diesel electric train, the reverser puts pressure into the cylinders and then the throttle effectively takes the pressure out of the cylinders and, and uses it to drive the wheels. So you've got to kind of balance the two things together. Generally speaking, as one goes up, the other kind of tends to come down. Um, but if this turns red over here, we've got to put more pressure back in. So it's a balancing act. It's a little bit more tricky than a, say, a diesel electric, but not tremendous amount. Let's just release those brakes. A bit more throttle now. Now, where are we going? How far away are we? Uh, five miles to Larrily Cement 1. I've not actually looked at the overhead map yet. That's not the overhead map. That's the overhead map. Uh, Sensor player. Boom. Here we are. Show the task. Dunk. Okay, so it's a drive-by, by the look of it, followed by cement one is here. So we're going to drive past and then switch signals and come back again into there, by the look of it. Good to know. Look inside this thing, by the way. Let's just turn this off for a second. Look inside. You get, like, one seat over here, and there's a window there, glass, which so you can't really look out of it. And then you get glass here as well. So this must be a sliding window of sorts. I think that's the handle there, presumably. That would open the window and then you can kind of do that. But even so, it's it's a particularly restricted view, isn't it? Either side. I mean, the, the sheer length of this train, the locomotive, the sheer length of it. You know, you're the driver, you're back here in this window. It's a hell of a long way. And of course, if, you, if you're here and you kind of look back, it's restricted visibility. You would have had a... Where's the actual... Oh, there's the... That would be the coal area. And that's the fire. So you'd have a couple, maybe three guys in here. Two or three guys in here. And a whole world of dials. So let's not be fooling to thinking driving these things was particularly easy. Uh, with all these dials here, I think it's safe to assume that it's not. Gauges and dials and a little viewport window. So in these temperatures like this, you'd probably stay inside and look through his little window, I think. Which we can just see there. Pressure gauges back up. Okay, 3.5 miles away. Now, in terms of graphics, um, what am I seeing different? Not a massive amount. Um, the whole thing feels a lot smoother. I'm just watching the cars actually. I'm trying to work out if there's been some modelling changes. The cars look a little bit more realistic. They seem to be going at a reasonable speed. The performance, though, seems better. Graphically, this thing is now frame rate wise, you know it flies around and it never used to but then again it could be because there's not a lot of scenery here I'd have to drive through a really scenic town to, to make sure of that so I'm, I'm not sure about that I am sure I'm speeding again let's just throttle down there we go kill the speed only issue when you look at this game. However, I have worked out as you press F3 and then press F5 up at the top right there, you see it now shows my speed. It doesn't show me what the speed limit is. Press F5 again, I get a whole lot of extra information. But if I don't want this panel on down here, it would be nice up here. It's good that it shows me my regulator, my re or throttle, my reverser settings uh, and the brake settings and my speed, but it doesn't show me my speed limit. Um, but it's better than having nothing. Now then, we're not far away. 2.1. Um, don't think we've got a speed change yet. I'm going to... Let's see where we are on the signals. Okay, so we've got to go past this thing and then we're going to have to switch the signal. That's fair enough. This looks like the cement factory. We'll just go for compressed signal. Compressed display for now. Uh, we are not far away. By the look of it. Laramie Cement. With the American flag there, look. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the lighting. I can't work out if that looks a little bit better. It feels like there's been some graphical improvements. But again, without any release notes, it's kind of hard to prove it. It would surprise me though, given that they're moving to a new engine, if they spent any time trying to improve this game graphically. 
but I've not been able to see any models. Oh, they look slightly better actually. They don't look quite as derpy as usual. Yeah, normally they have sort of rectangular wheels and stuff. Feels like the game is going to start getting better and maybe this time next year we might have a really decent game on our hands. At the moment it's it's okay is what I would say. There you go, see how the, um, the smoke's gone black. Okay, I really need to start slowing down. So, I'm going to set throttle to 2%. I'm going to put the reverser on minus 20 and I'm going to start applying the brakes in a second, like now. I think this is our reversing point coming up. Just check the map. Yeah. So we've got to get the, the back end over this thing. So that we can switch that back there. How did they do this in real life? They must have had yard markers down here. They must know how far they've got to go. Is that why it's saying destination? So it wants us to basically go down here. Uh, quite a way down actually before we stop. I'm gonna have to go though, I'm not sure we need to. If I look at the back of the train, I'm pretty certain that we that we're gonna pass the whole thing. Yeah, we've already passed it, look. We've already passed where we need to be, but you know, if I don't go where it tells me to. Okay, let's just stop. I'm pretty certain I should have stopped already. You don't need to be this far down the track. The steam trains have a certain delay on them because it's all about pressure build-up. Pressure on the, on the brake cylinders in this instance. So you really need to start doing things before you need them to happen. There we go. There we go. Whoa, boy. Okay, now then. Can we, uh... Oh, it's already flicked the signal for us. Train's making all kinds of weird noises. It's already set everything. We just need to reverse in now. Okay, let's do this. We'll set the reverser down to minus 60. What is the speed limit? 60 miles, okay. Let's release the brakes. Let's head backwards. Like this now, if you was a real driver of a steam train, this must be really scary. Like, you've got no comms, no visibility in the back of your train, and no comms. So you, you genuinely don't know where the heck the back of your train is. And that has got to be pretty scary. Again, there must be markers on the ground here that you can use. You must know how long your train is in terms of carriages. Okay, I'm just going to back off the throttle now because I feel like I'm going way too quick. I need to slow the hell down real fast. There we go. This is 10 miles an hour through here, and I just about sa saved that one. <laughs> okay. I was about to reverse my train at a ridiculous speed through a junction. I think I would have derailed everything if I'd have done that. Let's have a look at the back of the train now. There you go. So that's really cool. It's lovely and quiet back here lovely and quiet. When you're up here, everything's all super noisy. Let's get rid of that display. This is like Eurotruck now. This is like sticking my head out the window and reversing my trailer. <laughs> this is kind of cool. I love the way it's all lit up as well. Yeah, I mean, by modern standards, look at that skyline. By modern standards, that sky is about eight years out of date, <laughs> technology terms. But that will be addressed. Hopefully next year. Right, if you look at the back of the train now. 
let's see where we're going. I, I take it these are maybe the empty hoppers we have to take. I wasn't paying attention to what. Or maybe those there. I hope it's them. This is awesome. This looks so good from this point of view. Not sure how we know when to stop. Turn the throttle down a touch. Forgot about the bell. I should have put the bell on. I'm not sure what the rules are. You have to have the bell on when you're reversing, like the reversing um, reversing siren or something. Like the beep, beep, beep you get on trucks. You have to have that kind of thing going when you reverse something of this magnitude. Okay, we're almost... Almost at the destination. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. I think we can probably stop here. Put the brakes on the. There we go. Hopefully that's good enough. Has that done it? I don't think it has, you know. Oh, we'll have to decouple. Silly me. I'm used to passenger trains. Um, hmm. She's a decoupling point. Is it that one? Instruction complete. Conductor, okay, that took care of the load. Now gather up the empties. Get the loose cars off Laramie Cement 3 first. Get the loose cars off Laramie Cement 3. Okay. No problem. Let's have a look where Laramie Cement 3 is. Um, those four there, apparently. So we need to go forward. So it is, it is those four. Yeah, it is those four. Right. Throttle forward, reverse the forward, release the brakes. That moon looks fantastic. Moving cement trailers or uh, cement cargo around in the middle of the night. <laughs> right, let's get over this here and then we'll have to switch the signal. Unless it does it for us again, it may do. May well do. I think we'll get over this bit here because that's the signal itself. Though we'll get over that bit. That should do it, I reckon. Okay, switch that to there, and that takes us back into three. Let's put the brakes on a touch. Hit the reverser. Release the brakes. There's something very, very satisfying about steam trains. And I, I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is. Is it just the nostalgia? Or is it the fact that the, the massive, massive hunks of iron I don't know. I just love driving them. There's something wonderful about it. I can see why people do it for a hobby. I mean, there's people, you know, this sort of um, in in the holidays, you can you can go on a steam train and uh, just have fun. The people who operate them, people who drive these steam trains, like small gauge and full gauge, uh, they just do it for fun. They don't get paid. They just love driving them. In fact, there's a massive waiting list of people who want to drive them and you almost have to wait for somebody to die just before you can get to drive one because they're so rare I mean there's not many of them around um, but yeah they don't actually get paid they're just volunteers 
the volunteers who look after the rail quite often, and the volunteers who look after the trains and keep them going. It's incredible, and they do it for the fun. So there is something about it. And I kind of see where they, get, where they get that from. Now, I can't actually see the back of my train. I don't want to go third person. It kind of feels like you're a truck going third person. I don't do that either when I'm reversing. I kind of feel like I want to just do this and stick my head out the window and do it properly. Now, what speed should I be reversing at, I wonder? Three miles an hour feels like enough. I think we're about to make contact. We're seriously close. Come on. There we go. We have the loose cars. Now get the rest on Laramie 4. Right, so we are going to 4 as well. Okay. Forward then. Yeah, it just auto coupled them. I guess it's got one of those latch mechanisms. Have you ever seen them? They're like, um. Used to have them on the Hornby railway sets when I was a kid. And they're basically uh, a latch so that when you drive one carriage into another, the latch pops up and then hooks itself into the ring of the next carriage. So you can connect together automatically, but obviously, if you want to disconnect, you have to go and physically lift it up and. and and drive it away. Is that four by any chance? I think that's four on the left, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we've got to get these on the left as well. The thing is I like about freight um, runs is you don't have to put up with watching those rubbish models on the platform of people. Although I do, I hold in my heart a small hope that those models have been improved in this version of Train Simulator. I don't know if they have or not, but I really hope they have. I've yet to try a passenger uh, run. Been very, very busy making other videos. That's the reason I've not tried this yet. I've just jumped in here to try and make a video, um, but I haven't actually gone and checked it out to see whether the passengers have been changed. Which is my dream. Right, how far are we? That should do it. Let's reverse. Four miles an hour? I reckon three. Three is probably a safe connection speed, I would have thought. Let's see where we can get to. Three point seven. Come on, you can do it. Let's get the connector up. Actually, it's going to auto connect anyway, isn't it? That looks like it's about to make contact. Come on, there we go. Okay, we have all the hoppers and the hoses are connected. Let's get them up to the yard. Be sure to press tab to get permission to go back on the main line. There's a red signal waiting for us up ahead. Alright, where is the destination? Okay, it's all the way back up there. Okay, let's go forward. And um, press tab, because it's obviously all on red. I'm going to press tab now. Request to pass at danger approved. Cool, so that's now changed. We can now get on this line. Speed limit of 10. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Look at the way the body turns on the front bit. Did you see that then? A lot of detail there. A lot of detail.
Yeah, I do like this. I do like this train. There's something hugely nostalgic about this train. Even look at the um, on the the metal. The the moonlight reflects off it. It's very nice. I digress. It's our speed limit. We're about to go up to 60, but not yet. Look at the clouds. Those high-level clouds up there sort of going really quickly. It's really weird. How far is it? Oh, can't even pick up speed. Oh, hang on, you yeah, can. This is only one of the destinations. Whoa, slow down. I've got to go somewhere else after this. There's W for whistle. That's interesting. So when I crossed that crossing there, then I got a W. Hmm. Is that W... That doesn't make any sense. Why would you whistle after you've crossed that? Okay, let's go. Time to pick up speed. Do I have to stop here? Go via. No, we don't. Let's go via this and go via lower me 9 east. Okay. There's a speed limit coming up on that on our radar, but I can't see what it is. It's just like a mash of numbers. It looks like 40, I think. You're going to have to double red up ahead. You need to slow down as it will be a 20 miles per hour when you go through it. This is a proceed with caution. Okay. A double red. Was it 20 we need to get down to? Come on, brakes. <laughs> I really need you to start working at this point. Why is it I proceed with caution, I wonder? We are under the speed limit. Cool. Damn. I'm in love with this train. Just sit here and look at it all day. It's awesome. Right. Let's see what the issue is over here. task. Take her into the yard, make sure your switches are set at Laramie. Oh, well, I was about to. Blimey, hang on. I really need to stop. I can't actually see where we're meant to be going. Uh, oh my god. Laramie, Miss I East. This one. Crikey. It's like following a wiring diagram. That one there. That's set to go to the right place, I believe. And where are we coming from? Good God. Uh, hang on, that's going to go that way. That's going to go that way, which is going that way, which is going that way. Dear me. Right, I think it's going the right way. Crikey. This is why we have signalling conductors and stuff. I really hope I've set that right. Just listen to the noises. 
bits of metal clanking around. <laughs> so cool. Gonna back off the throttle a little bit. Sensor player, we are here. The line we are taking is this one. This is a complicated set of tracks coming up here. That's going to put us there. Which is that one. Which is Laramie Miss East. He says, hopingly. See, there's not many people around. You've got... Let's have a look at the cars. Yeah, those cars look markedly improved. They look a lot more realistic. I wonder if we see any passengers on platforms or whether we don't see any platforms here. No idea where we're going. What is all that green stuff over there? I can see all this. This is like a logging mill. We're bringing in, what was it, cement hoppers? Or was it concrete hoppers? I can't I think cement hoppers, wasn't it? Was that right? Yeah, cement. Laramie cement. So over there, that looks like a cement mixing station for building concrete. So we've got wood and concrete. Are they actually constructing here? Or do they just produce concrete and ship it out, I wonder? Mist East. I tell you what, it doesn't look as complicated on this now as it did before. What is this? Oh, listen, look at this. Oh, listen to that. Modern diesel electric meets steam. Fantastic. Wow, this is a long train he's got here. Me. Oh, you can see the articulation now. Look at that. Look. That is detail. Anyway, I better sort of stop admiring the view. Because I'm going to have to stop this thing. There's another train gone past. Wow. Is, what is that? Is that green stuff? What is... Oh! It's a track um, for... A, is it the logs to move the logs along? Or is it to move a conveyor belt? For moving all the cement around? I think that's what it is. There must be a quarry nearby and this is actually where we pick up the cement from and ship it out. Oh god, I'm speeding. Right, where are we dropping off? 0.67 miles. We will deliver. <laughs> On the side of those hoppers, look at that. We will deliver. Reminds me of a logo I'd put on the side of one of my um, school logistic things. Right, where do we stop this? Half a mile away. Yeah, we're in quite a busy area here. And performance-wise... The FPS seems markedly improved. So I would say they have been doing some work under the bonnet. Or the hood, if you're American. Look, see, there should be people walking around here. It shouldn't be this empty. Union Pacific. Okay, I think we just drop it off anywhere now. I think that's the idea. Break quicker by blowing the throttle in the opposite direction. Which is a really, really nice feature of steam trains. 
I think that's it. I think that's all we need to do here. That was awesome. Really enjoyed that. Bad luck, you did not successfully complete the scenario. What? Wow. And all of a sudden, I hate this game. <laughs> what? I just stopped exactly where you told me to, and you said I've not completed the scenario. That's ridiculous. Target's complete, 34 out of 35. Operation arrow speeding, yep, fine. Improper use of horn, I'll take that as well. Stopped at zero out of one destinations. Can you believe that? Can you actually believe that? That is one of the more irritating aspects, um, because now that scenario is incomplete and I'd have to spend another 40 odd minutes just going through that just to get it ticked, which I'm not going to do, because as far as I'm concerned, I did that scenario. Anyway, it is what it is, I suppose. It was this one, by the way. Big Boy Working Laramie Cement. That was the one I just did, but didn't do. <laughs> cool. Right, well, that's Train Simulator 2015. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a Union Pacific Big Boy, one of the scenarios in the Sherman Hill route. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like Train Simulator 2015. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of it. Until the next Train Simulator video, guys, take care. Happy training. <laughs>